Now let's get into the weeds of some nutritional biochemistry and start with the basics about what happens when you eat protein in food. First, let's compare how protein is digested, absorbed, and utilized compared with carbohydrates. Now carbohydrates are a very simple building block. So it's kind of nice to use them as a comparison and start to understand exactly how food is digested and processed and utilized inside of your digestive system. Now when carbohydrates are broken down after you eat them, they're completely digested in your small intestine and then enter your blood as individual, what are known as monosaccharides, like glucose and fructose. These are also called sugars, but I don't like to use the word sugar because it's very confusing, especially when you talk about white table sugar. So we will use the term monosaccharide, and that refers again to things like glucose and fructose and galactose and mannose and beyond, anything that has an os at the end. Now, when glucose in particular appears in your blood following a meal, your blood glucose increases, which in turn knocks on the door of your pancreatic beta cells to secrete insulin. And insulin is essentially a signal. And it tells cells in your liver and muscle in particular to accept available glucose from your blood, which they then absorb and then they either burn it for energy immediately or they store it for later use. It's just that simple when it comes to carbohydrates. It can be that simple and I'm gonna move on. Now, with protein, it can be just a little bit different, okay? Because protein biochemistry is a lot more complicated than carbohydrate biochemistry. Now, when you eat food containing protein, the process of protein digestion is initiated by the gastric juices inside of your stomach. They're actually released by the walls of your stomach. And they include hydrochloric acid and an enzyme known as pepsin. In addition to this, there's muscular contractions, which is known as peristalsis. And that also helps play a role in moving partially digested food material through your stomach and down into your small intestine. Okay, these strong contractions of the stomach help to mix the partially digested food together into a more homogenous mixture or a more well-mixed mixture, and that is known as chyme. Okay, so your stomach actually plays a very essential role in the digestion of protein because the internal environment is incredibly acidic. It has a pH of between 1.5 and 3.5, which means that if you took your finger and you stuck it inside of your stomach, if that was even possible, your stomach... I'm sorry, your finger would burn instantaneously because the pH is so low and the, uh, the gastric juice is so acidic that it would hurt to the touch, okay? This acidic environment is essential to protein denaturation or protein unfolding because that's where this occurs. This is similar to taking a tangled knot of rope and straightening it into a piece of string, okay? It's the unfolding of this rope which linearizes it and this is actually the first step in the protein digestive process. Now, denatured proteins lose their function instantaneously because proteins are only active from a biological state when they are folded in a very specific three-dimensional configuration. It is very, very important to understand that because the 3D structure of a protein is crucial. It is essential to its proper functioning inside of an organism. So when you denature and start to unfold the protein from its, what's called its native configuration, then this instantaneously neutralizes that protein and makes it no longer effective. And it actually begins the digestive process because the next step is to cut the protein into smaller pieces. So pepsin is the enzyme that then begins to cut the large whole intact protein into smaller protein fragments in preparation for more cutting that's going to happen in the next compartment, which is the small intestine. So these, these smaller protein fragments are then moved into your small intestine, okay? And they're moved in this sludge known as chyme. And chyme basically is partially digested food material that leaves your stomach it gets into the small intestine and then it mixes with a whole collection of other digestive enzymes and fluids, one of which is known as bile that's secreted from your liver. And it's in the small intestine that there's a whole collection of chemical processes that are occurring simultaneously because the chyme mixes with bile and it mixes with other enzymes known as chymotrypsin and trypsin. And they continue to cut these protein fragments into even smaller pieces, including single amino acids, 
double amino acids known as dipeptides, and triple amino acids known as tripeptides. So finally, when you get down to the single, double, or triple amino acid length is when those amino acids are ready to be absorbed into your blood. But anything larger than a three amino acid chain is likely not going to be absorbed directly into your blood. Now, these amino acids are absorbed into your blood, and then they're circulated to tissues. They're distributed to tissues all throughout your body. And much like glucose, insulin then signals cells to absorb these amino acids. And, they, and it turns them into, it, they can be used for a number of different processes. The first is called protein synthesis. So these, these amino acids get uptaken by a given tissue, and then they can get put into new protein in the new target cell if there is a need for protein. And the protein can get inside of your muscles and it can you know, build your protein mass and make you look bigger. It can also get put into very specific compartments within the, within the cellular architecture that can be used inside of the nucleus, in the endoplasmic reticulum, in the mitochondria, in the cytosol. There's a whole bunch of different places where they can be used. Some of them are structural, some of them are enzymatic. Some of them can be transcription factors that are used inside of the DNA replication process. Now, all of these processes require the use of amino acids, which are nitrogen containing. So any time you take an amino acid and put it into a new molecule, whether it's a protein or something else, the new molecule will contain nitrogen. And that's very important because from a biological perspective, not many molecules contain nitrogen. So these amino acids can then also be put into other metabolites that are used as intermediary mo molecules in a whole collection of biochemical pathways. And to spare you the details, we could do an entire year's worth of uh, talking and, and learning about what are these various different nitrogen containing compounds, but it's beyond the scope of this particular talk. Okay. Now, all cells have inside of them what's known as an intracellular amino acid pool. This intracellular amino acid pool is, is, you can visualize it as literally a swimming pool. It is a swimming pool of amino acids that are undergoing this 24 hour, 24 seven recycling process. So amino acids are being added to the intracellular amino pool as proteins are being broken down or catabolized inside of a cell. Amino acids are also being taken out of the intracellular amino acid pool and added to new proteins or added to other nitrogen containing metabolites. So at all times, there are proteins that are being broken down, which is catabolism. And then there's proteins which are being made, which is called anabolism. And that means that this pool is in a constant state of flux, meaning that it's being added to and taken out of simultaneously 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year from the moment you are born until the moment that you die. Hey, hey, this video was just a snippet of a much more in-depth discussion. Now we know not everyone has the time to watch an hour long video. So I hope that this highlight taught you something helpful. Now, if you're interested in watching the full length deep dive, then I highly recommend that you check it out because there's a ton more to learn on the subject. And this is just hitting the tip of the tip of the iceberg. Just click on the link on the screen to check out the full length episode. And if you're already going, whoa, 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 that's a lot to digest. I just want to live a healthy life and call it a day. Then don't worry because we have expert coaches who can help get you true long lasting health that can actually be very simple and be your accountability coach and give you a personalized roadmap to lower your blood sugar, to lose weight and to get off medication for good. Now the science behind health is overly complicated, unfortunately, but getting healthy doesn't have to be. Visit masteringdiabetes.org slash start. Answer some questions about yourself and schedule a free consultation to talk with somebody on our team who's going to show you exactly how we've transformed the lives of thousands of people using the Mastering Diabetes Method. It's important you answer all of the questions to the best of your ability because we want to be able to get you the right coach. We have a limited number of spots available, and that's why it's imperative to find a good fit. Again, visit masteringdiabetes.org start to schedule a free zero commitment discovery call and start taking control of your health today.